I'm Stacy Grinsfelder. And I'm Daniel Cantor. And you're listening to True Tales from Old Houses, the mini-sode. It's so small. Hey, Daniel. Hello, Stacy. How are you? I'm good. Very, very good. And you? Also good. Busy. <laughs> we always say that. We say, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Like I know. I was just going to like, do you have a nickname I should start calling you? Like, uh, Well, people used to call me Stacenator. That was one of my nicknames. Oh, my gosh. You shouldn't have told me that. Oh, no. <laughs> but OK, fair. Fair is fair. What was your nickname? It's going to be like fluffy or fuzzy or something I like that. I honestly, I didn't really have one. I had an ex that called me Bugs. Because- Bugs. No, bugs like buggers because oh, I'm bugs. always blowing my nose. I'm terribly allergy afflicted. <laughs> I feel like using a nickname given to you by your ex is just not a good idea. Yeah, we've retired it, but it was, I do feel like it was uh, accurate. Yeah. It was fitting. <laughs> it was fitting. Okay. <laughs> when I said fuzzy or fluffy, I was actually thinking about your hair. Your hair is just amazing, by the way. It's, thank you. Yes, Um, (laughs) very much so. (laughs) I appreciate it. It's always good to see you, but before we get into it, I do want to thank Sutherland Wells. Sutherland Wells is sponsoring the Minisodes this season, so thank you very much. Thank you, Sutherland Wells. So, Stacenator, how you been? Oh, gosh, I've been, I think I'm going to regret this for sure. (laughs) You are, you already do. (laughs) I've been really good. I rented a boom lift. I talked about the fact that I was going to rent one on the last episode as sort of a celebration of my 12 weeks of rest after surgery in June. And I got the boom lift and I had so much fun. And we're just doing little things, right? Cleaning gutters, fixing some little woodpecker holes, right? That's it? Well, that was the idea. But you know how things go. (laughs) I saw a little preview on Instagram. You saw a little preview. (laughs) All right. So here's the story. Yes, I cleaned downspouts, which were very much a mess. I did touch-up paint. I filled woodpecker holes. I got all that done. And then I had some time. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to... I'm just going to go back and and work on the sleeping porch a little bit. And it actually painting that was on my list. But the more I got into it, the more I realized, you know, this wood's pretty rotten. And then I decided to take the aluminum off the sills. And from there, <laughs> I found some rot. And then I pulled out the windows. And so, yeah, I deconstructed the sleeping porch. No big deal. Right. So you So you started a whole renovation. Essentially. If you would like to call it that. (laughs) I am trying not to think of it that way. But the Uh answer is yes. And I actually, I called Andy and I said I took the sleeping porch apart. And he thought I just said the porch. And we have another porch. And it's it's much bigger. It's enclosed with windows too. And I said, yeah, I took out the windows because there was so much rod. And I had to, you know, it just was one thing after another. He's like, how many windows did you take out? And I said, well, I took out all of them. And he was still thinking it was that back porch, which has these huge windows that are probably like, oh, six foot by eight foot and they have panes and there's you know five different right. sections of them and he's like i mean you could just tell he was trying not to just freak out like oh my gosh <laughs> stacy has started this project like what what is happening here and finally i realized i said wait i said the sleeping porch he goes oh the sleeping porch and that's a little room off the primary bedroom but i still think he's trying not to panic to be real honest with you mm-hmm. but I- anywho I got a, you said it was little. It's not that little. It's pretty big. <laughs> it's little-ish compared to some of the other things I've taken apart. I guess relative to the rest of the house, yeah. Yes. All right. So depth-wise, it's probably, it really isn't much bigger than five feet, maybe? Four feet, five feet? It's pretty narrow um, as far as the depth goes. But yes, it's probably... I don't know. I didn't measure it. Probably 12 feet long, I guess. Maybe. Maybe. I think it's longer. You think it's longer? I think it's closer to like 20. Why would I pretend to know it's your house? <laughs> I'm like, I saw it once. I actually think you might be correct. But like I said, I'm just, I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it loose. I've got an idea. <laughs> uh, I actually, it's going to be much better than it was. I just have to remove some rotted wood first. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm going to put it together much nicer. I mean, it was put together in such a slapdash way, at least the sides were, that this will mm-hmm. be better. It'll be, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll follow up with that on future episodes. But but yes, I have created a situation for myself and I, I don't regret it yet, but I probably will in about two weeks time. Okay, we'll check back in. Is okay. this... Part, is that part of your house original to the house, or do you think it was added on? No, I think it was original, but I think it was a little bit different than it is now. So what I think is that they they did have a sleeping porch there. It was probably just screened in, and maybe they had some big wooden shutters or something. They just closed the whole thing up because mm. this was a summer house. Blake Hill House was a summer house. Oh, Nobody was there in I the winter. That. Yeah. So when they left for the summer, they probably just boarded that up and called it a day. I also think that the roof line outside was a little bit lower. Now this is on top of Mm. an original porch, but it was a little lower. So there would have been some drain holes in there and there's a natural Mm. slope and it would have drained any sort of rain or whatnot out. That isn't possible now because over time, of course, that roof line has increased a little. We actually raised Mm -hmm. it the last time I got new roofing because it was pretty flat. It was actually a little flat section there. And rather than have it flat with a big snowbank on it every winter, we angled it so that that would all run off. So there's no drainage there. I can't leave it open because I'll get snow in there, I'll get leaves, rain, and none of that has a place to go. And that would be a complete and utter disaster. Makes sense. Yeah. So I've got some modifications to do. Congratulations on your new <laughs> On my new adventure. project that I must get done in the next six weeks because it will be too cold and then I'm moving. So yes, next year I'm moving. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. It's all going to be great. In, the, in your words exactly, Daniel, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Apparently I'm known for that. I didn't realize, but multiple people have made fun of me in the last week. Like, or not made fun, but you know. Brought it up. Like you always say, it'll be fine. I'm like, I guess I do say that a lot. Well, that you do. It's it's what you got to tell yourself. Um, I mean, I'm sitting here like kind of making fun of you and I'm in pretty much exactly the same spot. I'm I'm absolutely doing a renovation and totally pretending that I'm not. Right. Um, So do tell because we kind of started to get into a little bit of detail last episode and then I think that all got cut. So now I need you to fill us in on your project that's not really a project, renovation that's not really a renovation. Nothing to see, folks. Right. Nothing to see here, just a gutted room. So I own this duplex building down the street and I've only owned it for a little over a year and a half, but a whole bunch of stuff has gone on, including most recently the first floor tenant who I basically turned my life upside down to renovate this apartment basically for her and her family and turned around and rented it way below market ra- value. And, you know, I, I did everything I possibly could, but unfortunately that situation did not go very well. And so long story short, the apartment is vacant again and... Uh, a little worse for wear, let's say. Um, not quite the condition I handed the keys off in. And then there's, so there's sort of the one task of just kind of bringing it back to where it was. And then there's the, what if I just pull this thread a little more and Uh-oh. do some stuff that I, I did, I wanted, I would have done the first time around. There was not time. There was not money. But now that I have the opportunity, and I'm not sure when I'll have it again, because in theory, somebody will live there, I want to take care of some stuff that was just felt lingering and bad. So that work is mostly focused in the kitchen and the bathroom, of course. And in the kitchen, there was a drop ceiling, like a very like office-style drop ceiling. And it was in not not in good shape, pretty significantly out of level. So when you say office drop ceiling, are you talking about the kind with the little metal parts that the ceiling towels drop down into? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So those those like inch thick or inch wide metal channels kind of thing. So I knew from peeking before that there was some sheetrock under there. And that was a little strange, but I could tell it was in terrible condition. I mean, everything in this place was in terrible condition. Everything I haven't touched is just assume it's awful. And let's clarify, this wasn't all because of your tenant. It was just the building was in bad, bad shape when you got it. Right, right. So I kind of made it 
okay. I painted it. I replaced a couple of the tiles that were busted up, but like there wasn't the possibility of fully redoing this was just not there at the time. So I felt like now's my chance. And so I uh, uh, went in thinking I'm going to rip out you know, this, these ceiling tiles, which is like super easy. And then I'm going to rip down some sheetrock, which is super easy. And then I'm going to insulate and... Right. Call it a day. Uh Uh-huh. And then, so I was up, I was exploring, I was on my exploratory mission and I see a little glimpse of tin above the sheetrock. And I'm like, oh gosh. So there's a tin ceiling, at least on part of the ceiling. So I proceed to the route while the floors are getting refinished at the cottage. I have a little bit of time. So I'm like, all right, now's the moment. So I go in, I take out the drop ceiling, take down the drywall. Tin ceiling does run the full span of the room. Okay. But it's in very bad shape. So parts of it are actually in great shape, the tin itself. But the whole ceiling sags like a foot toward the middle of the room. Okay, wait a minute. From the side to the center, you've got about almost 12 inches of sag. And there's a tenant upstairs, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, this sounds you're, bad. You're following. Yes. Uh-huh. So there's this one, the area that was really bad, the tin was all rusted out. Nothing good has happened there. And what I've figured out from prior work, too, is like the roof on this section of the house must have been horrible at some point. There's significant water damage in a couple of areas. So, unfortunately, because... The parts that were nice were quite nice, but I knew whatever was happening above it could not be good. And I knew from the age of the building that it was very unlikely that the tin ceiling was original to the building. So it was usually put up to cover a failing plaster ceiling in maybe the 20s or so when the house was already 50, 70 years old. So, so far we have drop ceiling, sheetrock, furring strips above the sheetrock, tin, And then above the tin, there's more furring strips. And then above the furring strips, there's plaster. And then above the plaster, there's lath. So we have layers and layers. I thought about it, but it was essentially a no-brainer that like all this has to come out. Ceiling lasagna. Exactly. And usually when a tin ceiling is installed over failing plaster, they'll nail furring strips into the joist. So through the plaster, through the lath, into the joist. Very secure connection. In this case, the framing is like all over the map. And I'm sure they just couldn't find joists. (laughs) They're like, I don't know. So a lot of the tin and then the subsequent drywall was just being held on by lath that was totally pulled away from the joist. So essentially what we had is about 3,000 pounds of material just kind of floating. Sagging in the middle, apparently. In the next 10 years, I would say, this thing is going to collapse, and that could seriously hurt someone and be, you know, bad. So as a landlord, you never consider just putting a pillar up in the center of the room to hold up the ceiling? (laughs) You know, no, I didn't. I'm kidding. I am totally kidding. Maybe I should have, but... Anyway, and of course, above the plaster, there's no insulation. So and that's most mostly a sound thing. And where are we today with this? Where we are today is actually pretty good. So Brad was here, we did some fairly minor structural work just to like shore up a couple of things that really seemed problematic. And then for the rest of it, like, I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I looked at it. And I looked at it. And I was like, honestly, the only way to like, really, truly fully resolve this is to pull up the entire second floor, reframe the entire floor system, put down new subfloor. Like none of that is happening. So the compromise I came to was basically let's let's shore up what we can and then even removing all of that stuff, the ceiling is still crazy out of level, like in a way that is not cute old house out of level, like just a mess. <laughs> so when Brad is here, we basically sistered all of the joists so that they're level. And then when the sheetrock goes up, it'll be a level ceiling. And I insulated like to the hilt because because of that sistering, in some places I had like 14 inches of cavity <laughs> to <laughs> insulate. So there's parts of that ceiling that are insulated to like R53, which is a little insane. How much ceiling space did you get? Is the ceiling higher now? It 
is, depending on where you are in the room, it's about, at minimum, it's like six inches higher. Okay, and a maximum of a foot. It's really something special. So it's much more sound. It's more, it's insulated, you know, it's all good. And the sheet rocker is going to start in a few days. So that's great. And then I have to repaint the whole place, which I got quoted, but I can't afford it. So oh, bummer. I'm going to be painting. I'm going to have lot. to paint with you, aren't I? I would be forever grateful because <laughs> <laughs> the cottage is so much painting right now. And it's like the last thing I want to keep doing is painting, but I'm yeah. just going to have to. I think for this, I'm going to, I'm going to spend the time to tape everything off so I can just spray. Just oh, spray, that's spray, a good spray. idea. Yeah. No, I'll look at my schedule. Um, and if I can get my own sweater knitted back together, then I'll come and help you with your sweater that you pulled the thread on. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it'll be fine. I'll manage it. <laughs> so everything's going great is the point. <laughs> yeah. So, so the TLDR is everything's going great. Thanks. Thanks for that. Everything's fine, and there's very little to report on. Yeah, um, exactly. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> well, we do. That's so funny. Gosh, both of us are in this mess. We're going to have uh, some interesting things to talk about for the next couple of mini sets while we know. put our lives back together. Yeah. I mean, excuse me, our rooms back together, our spaces back together. Mm-hmm. Keep me accountable because this has to just proceed along and be done. I hear like, you. I got to get that place rented. So, Can we keep each other accountable? Sure. All right. We'll have to, behind the scenes, we'll talk about what we need to have done next time we talk to each other and see if we can make it happen. Okay. All right. I like that. You looked a little panicked, like, oh my gosh, are we, are you, she serious? Like, do we really <laughs> have to do that? Like, do I really have to tell her what I'm doing? No, you do not. No, I want it. I want it and I need it. True Tales from Old Houses mini-sodes are supported by Sutherland Wells. All of Sutherland Wells' products are handcrafted in Providence, Rhode Island with the highest quality sustainably grown tongue oil. Tongue oil, which is native to China, has been used for centuries as a durable finish for wood, metal, and stone. And unlike polyurethane, tongue oil finish penetrates the surface of the wood so it flexes and contracts as the conditions change. And that makes it the perfect pre-finish or protectant for everything from fine furniture to window sash and sills. Sutherland Wells has an entire product line for whatever you're working on right now, be it siding, hardwood floors, furniture restoration, cutting boards, you name it. So to learn more about the complete product line, visit Sutherland Wells, that's W-E-L-L-E-S, sutherlandwells.com. And to save 10% on your first order, use the coupon code TRUETALES. Last week, the episode of In With The Old on the Magnolia Network featuring Brad's project at Silver Lake and you and a little brief cameo by me aired. And I thought it would be fun to talk about some things that happen behind the scenes because we couldn't talk about it. We couldn't talk about what happened. We couldn't talk about the show for a really long time. And it was kind of funny. So go for it. Why don't you start? Yeah. So the episode aired. Uh, we saw it right along with everyone else. People kept asking, like, have you seen a cut? We're nope. Um, so we had nothing to from the second they stopped filming at our last shoot. That was it till we saw it. Oh, my gosh. So let me first ask you, did you like it? Did you think that it was an accurate representation more or less yeah i i did like it i think i feel like the producers were very respectful of kind of what we did and didn't want to show you know like i think most people are aware that there's always a lot of times on these like types of shows there's always like a moment of drama and then it cuts to commercial and like there were a couple times where they sort of tried to prompt us to do that and we were both like no thank you (laughs) they were like okay that's fine so I think it was really weird to see it play out so fast it felt really fast 
So like for context, we filmed every month for four months, two day shoots. So eight full days of filming. Um, And then of course we were doing a ton of work in between to set up for the next filming. And so to watch it all cut together into this like 45 minute thing, it it made the renovation look so quick and easy. Yeah, I was going to say that was so easy for you guys. Didn't take any work at all, right? Yeah, super quick. Barely lifted a finger. Um, So that was really funny. And then I guess I was surprised by how much just got completely left on the cutting room floor, like didn't even make it into like a B-roll shot or anything. So, and there were a couple things that were like kind of a pain to shoot and then they just didn't make the show at all. So like one of them was they felt really strongly that they show us buying lumber. Lumber, okay. Out there, the, the lumber, the hardware store we go to for lumber is... Very, uh, how, how to say? Local. Hyper local and, uh, and, and not the kind of people who respond especially well to like a bunch of producers from LA being like, Hey, can we take over your store? So we had to sweet talk them into just letting us film for like five minutes. We were like, we'll be in and out. It'll be so simple. Like, don't worry about it. And they did. And then they didn't use any of it. Oh no. There was that we shot for like half a day at Letchworth State Park I think they used a little bit of drone footage, but didn't use any of that. We shot at a local little coffee shop bakery kind of place called Butter Meat Company. That didn't get used. We spent like half a day at like at Silver Lake Institute. They have this kind of community building called the Hogue that is like a museum sort of. I guess it was always I think it was always essentially a museum. And then now it's sort of a museum about the museum that it used to be, as well as kind of the history of Silver Lake. Gotcha. I don't know. It's a really cool building. And one of the other residents, Sharon, who is sort of the like community historian, I guess, like showed us around and, get, you know, it was this whole thing. Didn't use a piece of it. And then they, they do two types of like straight to camera interviews on these shows. One is like, the sit down where everyone's sort of put together and looking pretty and sitting there and it's all nicely lit. So based on the day that I I filmed with you guys, it was just a camera in your face. The produ- This is what you're talking about, right? Where the camera's in your face and there's a producer and then they ask you questions and then you have to answer those questions. Is that what you're talking about? So that's like the other type. So there's OTFs, which... It was like until the last shoot that I was like, okay, what does that stand for? And they're like, on the fly. And I'm like, oh. So there's OTF interviews that are the ones where you're standing there and there. And and then there's like the sit down one, which is what they use. They splice it in throughout the show. Mm -hmm. So they'll sort of have you say things as though they haven't happened yet, but they have because this is at the end. Sure. And so we spent hours doing those things and then just none of it. Right, right. All right, so I had a fun time watching the show because there were some parts of it where I was actually sitting in the bathtub in the bathroom with <laughs> the uh, what do you call those guys who were just like one of them was the sound guy he would listen to how the sound came across and then there was another guy he was in production and he just did stuff on his computer I don't know what he was doing in there I think that was Kyle he had like three different jobs by the end he was basically the production manager. Okay. So that part where I, where Brad says, I'm just going to call Stacy. So during that part, I was actually, I mean, are we, sh- can we ruin this television magic or should we not? Oh, totally. We only signed an image release, so. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. So the part where Brad said, I'm just going to call Stacy, I was standing outside and I could hear him say that. I was like, yeah, he's going to call me because I'm right outside here in the parking lot. (laughs) And then the other part where you went over and showed him that beautiful painting by the local artist of Letchworth, and you can say her name again because it's a beautiful, gorgeous painting and I'm so jealous. But I was sitting in the bathtub in the bathroom right there when you were doing that part. (laughs) <laughs> That's really funny. Um, I forgot that. Yeah, it was hard to keep track of like where people were. Yeah, that was one thing that didn't make the show and and was my if I if I were allowed to change one thing, this is it. 
I remember like cutting and being like, I just have to make sure I'm getting the name right. The artist is named Amy Balling. Uh, I have not met her. She seems like a very nice person. I hope she was not disappointed because we absolutely credited her multiple times Mm -hmm. uh, verbally, but they they cut cut it. it. And actually, when you watch the show, like you can see exactly where they cut it. Because I was like, a local artist cut, and it was a local artist named Amy Balling. So Amy Balling. Does she have an Instagram or a website? Or She does. It's it's <laughs> Ballin with Balling, which is adorable. The woman who owns that store, 11 Covington, is Nicole. And Nicole said that she only started painting like when COVID hit. She's a biology teacher and just decided to try her hand at painting. And she's like, so good at it. <laughs> so good. All right. You know what? I'll drop her link in the show notes. Thank you. Give her a little shout out there, Amy Balling. Beautiful painting. I was happy about how the window segment turned out. What I was most afraid of is that they were going to take something that I said and stick it in wherever and everything was going to be kind of out of context. But overall, I was thrilled with how that went. And I was really happy that they got shots of us wearing our our PPE, our personal protective equipment, those P100 masks, because that was really important to Brad and I that we show personal protective equipment on a home rental show, a DIY show, because so often Mm -hmm. it doesn't make the cut. Either they're not wearing it or nobody thinks it's important, so they take it all out. I was very happy with the fact that they chose to leave that PPE in. That was all I really wanted. I knew we weren't going to be able to show an entire window restoration in a short snippet on a 45-minute show. But I feel like I got what I wanted. I think it came together really well. You know, there were a couple, like they left out, I think, putting some linseed oil in the rabbit. But mm-hmm. like, they got the basic strokes of it, right? Like, it, they did. it actually was informative. And that was that was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the producers overall, like, were, were just very respectful of sort of what how we wanted stuff to come across and you know they knew the PPE thing was a big deal so they made sure it was in there which was nice and I agree the first day for some reason I wasn't really involved in any discussions prior to filming like I literally they showed up and they were like who are you and I'm like I'm the boyfriend (laughs) they were like (laughs) are you okay being on camera and I was like I mean I'm obviously in wardrobe so um (laughs) which by the way you don't. You do your own hair and makeup and wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> That's why I was wearing a half zip, just like I always wear in the winter. <laughs> 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 and that's why I was wearing some badly applied concealer. So um, so they come in and like, I don't know where they got this idea, but they were just kind of running with it that Brad and I were doing like themed rooms. So like the bathroom was like a 1920s theme. Uh, okay. And the kitchen was like a 1950s theme. And then in the living room, they were like, so this wallpaper is this like, 60s and like Brad is so nice that he was kind of like I I guess and I just pulled one of the producers aside I was like I understand if like this is what you need to make the show what you want it to be but that's not what we're doing like at all (laughs) and they were like oh really and and then they dropped it and we never heard about it again oh that's good so you, you weren't forced into that no, no, they they really, they did not force us to do anything other than jump from one task to another before we were done with the first one. Right, right. Because they didn't understand. Right. They're like, we just want to film like whatever you're doing. Don't, you know, go out of your way for us. And then we'll get like 15 minutes into something and they're like, okay, can we do an, another thing? Because, you know. That happened with the window restoration stuff too, because we were taking so long, you know, and it's like, oh yeah, just do your thing. And then at some point I think... I was asked this question, like, so is this really, like, all there is to do with it? Like, will you be doing more? Will you just be doing this same thing over (laughs) and over again? (laughs) It was pretty funny. I thought, well, yeah, actually, this is kind of it. It's repetitive work. Yeah, they really wanted to speed it along. And it's it's time consuming. And then, do you remember the beverage debacle? Oh, God. (laughs) Can I ruin that, too? Again, as part of kind of the formula, there's always like a little, some kind of gathering at the end of these shows. And they don't want 
a bunch of people because then it's too chaotic. They just want like three or four people kind of thing. So we knew we had to have you back. And then we invited a couple of neighbors. Um, Brad got super stressed about like, oh gosh, if I invite this person, then this person's going to be mad. I'm like, they're all adults. Like everyone's fine. Right. And so we had, I guess, four four guests at our, our party and we were planning to have champagne and we we were going to go buy it, but then we were up until like four in the morning the night before the, the big reveal and, you know, we just didn't have a chance and we we're like, we can just ask production to do it. Didn't you have to get special clearance for champagne? Well, no. So we were like, hey, can so there was a PA that day, Katie, and we were like, can, can Katie go run and just buy a bottle of champagne real fast? And they were like, oh, I don't know if we're allowed to drink alcohol on Magnolia. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, I okay, you know, I don't, I obviously don't know. And they're like, yeah, I just, I don't know. Turns out you can, but um, they didn't know that. And so, so they were like, what about lemonade? Let's do lemonade. And I'm like, sure, whatever. Like, I don't care. And so they send out the PA to grab some lemonade. And she came back with powdered, like country time lemonade. And I don't know if anyone's ever taken a good look at country time lemonade but that stuff is like fluorescent radioactive (laughs) it looks like gatorade it is so repulsive and we have you know these champagne flutes and like this little tray from (laughs) the neighbor and whatever you know and i i mix this stuff and i'm like oh god it's it's like this looks like toxic waste and it's all happening like It was all actually happening where you and I were in the kitchen prepping the drinks while these people are coming in and they're actively shooting. And so we just had to solve the problem real fast. And so my big solution was to grab like a can of seltzer and just do a little bit of the country time and then fill up the rest with seltzer. But then I ran out of seltzer. So then I just had to use water. And then I have to come in with this tray of these disgusting drinks (laughs) and I mic'd. And as I'm passing them, I'm trying to be like, don't actually drink it. It's disgusting. And the, but everyone's old and they can't hear me. (laughs) And they're so polite that one of the participants was like, "Mm, this is wonderful. And I was like, it's, it's not. Let's be clear too. This lemonade came right off the shelf. So it was warm. The seltzer, I don't think was cold. The water wasn't. So basically it was warm, watered down lemonade in a champagne glass. And if you look at the show, the funniest thing to me is that we're all, we say cheers and we all like clink our glasses together and then we put it up to our mouth, but nobody drinks it. So if you get a chance to watch (laughs) the show again, notice that nobody drinks this drink. It's all just like, cheers, this is great. And then nobody takes a sip because it's horrible. It was absolutely repulsive. (laughs) So anyway, that was, I thought that was really funny. And I like that even though it didn't actually get mentioned, you and Brad are both wearing True Tales from Old Houses aprons during the window section. That we are, so yeah. I thought you were great. Also, I have to correct you a little bit. I think the first mini this season or something, you said... I loved it because I came in, I did my window part, and then I just came back for the party. And that is not true. Stacy was there several weekends helping us paint. You you painted half that house. Uh, well, not half that house, but I was happy to help. You were very involved off camera, too, and, you know, were it a huge, huge help to us because the, these timelines were really short. Weather was very uncooperative um so well i had a blast it was my pleasure thank you you're very very welcome well have we done it we've done it we have wrapped it up for the day again we have we'll see everyone next week we're headed into spooky season so uh get ready for some ghost stories and i don't know anything else no i guess i would just want to say thank you for listening to true tales from old houses the mini-sode until next time